Okay, so for part B of this wonderful lab, we are basically doing the exact same thing as part A, except instead of using pure sodium bicarbonate, we are going to be using an unknown, okay? So all of these unknowns are mixes. They have some percentage of it as sodium bicarbonate and some percentage that's not. Your job will be to figure out what percent is actually sodium bicarbonate, and you can do that by figuring out how much product you make. And we have to pick A through E, which, which unknown we want. So we're gonna pick D. Now look, we're back at the scale. Okay, so new empty test tube. We mass it. Ta-da! And same thing, we add about one gram of unknown D. Ooh, exciting. And we mass it. Not the dough, so I'm gonna do the same thing for unknown D. Here we go, let's decompose it. And there it goes. Oh, there we go, reaction's done. Perfect. Okay. Now we burn off the, uh, we burn off. Now we evaporate the condensation that's left on the sides of the test tube. Very good. Let's go mass it. Okay, back at the weighing station. Here we go. Okay, now let's figure out what to do with this. So let's try and figure out what's actually going on with this reaction and how to figure out uh, how much of your unknown is actually the sodium bicarbonate, okay? So first things first, we look at our regular equation for the sodium bicarbonate decomposing, okay? So we've got sodium bicarbonate, which is gonna decompose into carbonic acid. This further splits apart into water vapor and carbon dioxide, but for the purposes here, it doesn't matter, okay? So carbonic acid and sodium carbonate, okay? And then you look and you make sure that your equation is balanced. Don't forget that, okay? All right, and the really important piece is gonna be that, okay? That the carbonic acid is going to be a gas. We are creating a gas, which we know, right? That was the whole purpose of that apparatus, okay? Is to watch the gas move through it and see how much gas we're collecting, all right? So for our unknown, okay, when we have that unknown D that we're working with, whatever, unknowns A through E, we needed to add in something that wouldn't decompose with heat, okay? So this goes back to like chapter three, okay? We need to add in some kind of compound that's not going to decompose or break apart when I heat it up. So I want something that has a really high melting point and a really high boiling point. So I wanna add some kind of ionic compound, all right? Really good, easy ionic compound to come around, table salt, okay? So all of our unknowns were just mixtures of sodium bicarbonate and table salt. So in our actual test tube, we had this reaction going on, but we also had and salt, okay? In our test tube, all right? And in our test tube, the salt doesn't do anything, right? The salt doesn't react. So at the end, our products, we also get and that sodium chloride solid. Okay, nothing happened to it, right? Hooray for ionic compounds having those high melting and high boiling points, okay? All right, so what I'm doing with my unknown, all right, is basically first I need to calculate and see how much I actually had in my test tube, all right? So for my empty test tube for trial A, for trial one, part B, right, was, 
24.957 grams. Okay, that was my empty test tube. And my test tube with my unknown D was 26.083 grams. So we do some simple subtraction and we find 1.126 grams was my was my unknown D. Okay, this is how much unknown D I had in my test tube, which means this mass is some amount of sodium chloride and some amount of sodium bicarbonate. Okay, now law of conservation of mass means I can't delete some of that mass, right? I can't just, it, it's gone from existence. So that means this amount, 1.126 grams of my reactants has to still be how much all three of these things combined weigh. These has to be 1.126 grams as well. Okay, which is great because then I can use my data from lab and work backwards to figure out how much of each thing I have. Okay, trust me, let's actually work it out. So I still have the empty test tube would be 24.957 grams, but my product plus my test tube was 25.849 grams. Okay, so now I do some subtraction. Okay, just wanted to double check my math, all right? And yes, this is correct. So this would be the product, right? Which makes no sense. How is it possible that I have 0.892 grams of my product when I know by conservation of mass, I can't lose any mass. I have to have 1.126, okay? The way that this is possible is because of my products, one of them is a gas, okay? So one of them floated away and is not actually being included in this 0.892. Perfect. That means I can actually solve for how much carbonic acid floated away, all right? Because I can say the 1.126 grams that I should have had in my products, for my total products, right? Law of conservation of mass, that side was 1.126. This side has to be 1.126. Subtract the other two things that were in my test tube to get me that 0.892 grams. Subtract 0 0.892 or hopefully that's correct, okay? So assuming that I did my subtraction correctly, you should absolutely type it in your calculator to make sure that you don't take my word for it, okay? This would be the mass of H2CO3, okay? Now you can use stoic, okay? You can use stoichiometry and work backwards to figure out how many grams of sodium bicarbonate were actually in your test tube to begin with, okay? And then you can take that percentage. So you're gonna do stoic, work backwards, and then you'll take your grams of NaHCO3 and you're gonna divide it by the total grams, which would be this, the 1.126 grams, ugh, that's a two, 1.126 grams, this would be my total. So I'm gonna take grams of NaHCO3, divide it by my total, times it by 100, and I will get the percentage of my initial unknown D I'll get what percent of that was actually sodium bicarbonate, okay? You could also then figure out, of course, what percent of that is NaCl just by taking 100 and minus the percent of this, okay? 
Make sure when you're doing your stoic, make sure that you pay attention to the two coefficient here. Okay, so when you do that mole ratio, make sure you pay attention to this. Happy math, okay? Of course, your lab ask us, asks us to do this twice. So I'm just gonna, we'll zip through getting the data because you don't need to watch it boil 52 times, okay? Good luck. Unknown D, trial number two, empty test tube. Add about a gram of unknown D. Evaporate the water. And we get our final mass. 